Hi, everybody. Welcome to No Story is Sacred. If you've never listened before, basically, we're four siblings who grew up talking about the art of storytelling. Now that we're adults, we're still talking about it, and we're inviting you to join the conversation. I'm Pippin, and I am sure that I can trust uh, this huntsman that I met in the woods. I'm Alex, and I'm sure I can trust all the his ki- kind dwarves who took me in. I'm Kat, and I'm sure I can trust this comb, this uh, apple. This apple looks great, guys. Yeah. I'm Brendan, and I'm sure I can keep this running joke going. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Uh. On one hand, I'm very pleased that I started off a running joke. On the other, I'm disappointed in myself because I didn't say I'm Pippin and I'm the fairest of them all. I, I think that just proves that uh, you're not. Well, like, I think it just means that I'm so secure in myself that I don't need to <laughs> go asking random mirrors. Um, yeah, that fucking mirror, am I right? Right? Like, you're the fairest. Definitely. Totally. <laughs> you're the, the fairest in this room right now. In the whole wide room. a whole wide room all right so today we are talking about the fairy's tale snow white if you don't know snow white uh according to google the summary of the disney version which is not the only version we'll be talking about today cat i could hear Uh you starting to object (laughs) uh but it was the smallest just quick summary i could find yeah uh uh-huh yeah Jealous of Snow White's beauty, the Wicked Queen orders the murder of her innocent stepdaughter, but later discovers that Snow White is still alive and hiding in a cottage with seven friendly little miners. Disguising herself as a hag- Miner, Miners, not, miners, the people who get rocks, not miners. Miners, not miners. <laughs> Fun with homin. <laughs> Fun with homophones. Uh... Disguising herself as a hag, the queen brings a poison apple to Snow White, who falls into a death-like sleep that can be broken only by a kiss from a prince. You that is the- became... Cat, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you wish, yes. you may now object. <sighs> well, first of all, it's not just me objecting, my cat objects as well. So, sure. it's two against all y'all. Um, three actually, of us. Shut up. <laughs> so anyway, actually, you know, I don't object that much. There's a lot of folklorists who get really like snotty about Disney, and I mean reasonably <laughs> so. But Disney, Disney's version also has entered the folk process, and therefore it's just as valid as the other ones. We're just annoyed by it because it's like a corporation instead of the people. Mm. But like Grimm did their own fucking shit to it too. They were weird. They're all yeah. weird. In fact, uh, one of the changes that the Grimm, bo- mother, Grimm brothers made was cha- changing the uh, queen from um, Snow White's it's, uh, the, from uh, Snow White's mother into her stepmother. That's right. That was homegrown, baby. Oh yeah. Well, in that version, what a a very early recognizable Snow White. Uh, was, God, it was her aunt or some shit. Like, no, it was not even, a, it wasn't even a stepmother by marriage. It was, not, it was weird. It was weird. Uh, and, and that was in a, uh, uh like an Italian version from the Pentameron, uh, called The Little Slave. <laughs> oh, that's ah. mm. yeah, ah, there you go. Mm, mm, yeah, that, that. Honestly, it had, it was a lot, it was connected, it was mixed a lot with, uh, what we consider, uh, Cinderella, maybe. And also, Bluebeard, my favorite. So wait, wait, all the all these stories about young women and in mortal peril end up being interconnected somehow in the folk tradition. What? That sounds fake. Weird. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I did. I went back and, and found. I didn't sell all my college books, um, and so I went back and I found my uh, collection. Of the the classic fairy tales by Marita, uh, Maria Tater. And uh, uh, so a bunch of different versions of Snow White and a critical essay, too. Um, and, and, and per that illustrious lady, uh, Snow White has some pretty recognizable bits and pieces. Um, you know, you have uh, jealousy, 
the first part, jealousy the second part. Um, <laughs> jealousy, you have, re- jealousy redux. <laughs> you have um, uh, uh, the the really crazy shenanigans that go on trying to fool the queen. Um, so we have in in many of the versions that we may know, there's a huntsman and a heart. Um, has to cut out the the Snow White's heart to bring to the queen. But in other versions, there's other proofs of death. Such as her uh, liver and lungs that she then eats. Yeah. Yum, yum, yum. I, I say ew, but that's actually like... Oh, no, there's more. Uh, there was a stopper of blood stoppered with Snow White's own toe. Huh. Uh, the, the, the huntsman had to... This huntsman had to have gotten... And get, get, get really creative in some, uh, some versions. Yeah, there's like deep creativity required. Like, uh, really, after this, he's going to open his own Etsy shop. <laughs> yes it, it, there's there's a lot of weird shit um and then there's the the going into hiding and then the various death attempts and then they fell asleep and then resuscitation hooray one of the theories that this the reason that it's so like solid as a storyline is that it's um it's the story of becoming a woman <laughs> and i'm like it what the fuck did your all's like womanhood look like? Like Jesus. <laughs> so, uh, now you know who you know what my professor in college uh, subscribed subscribe to. Uh oh, that one. <laughs> fuck. Because uh, you know what the apple represents: <sighs> menstruation. Obviously. Of cause- really? course. What this is right up there with Macbeth in three days. <laughs> Yeah, because it's red. Wait, no, but first of all, first of all, the apple's not always there. Second of all... Sometimes the apple is, is half white, half red. It's a... It's a... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a thing. And also, if you look at the yeah. other things that happened to her you uh, in some of the stories, you have the stays, the, the corset stays there too yeah. tight and the comb in her hair. This is signs of vanity. And, uh, uh, which is then mirrored by <laughs> the mirror. Um, so the apple, I would, if I was going to say anything, I would say that the apple is, is, uh, virginity. Oh, like, well, the, well, well yeah, but they're also, uh, uh traditional, well, it's, uh, signs of maturity. The, the young girl is now, oh, putting on, uh, putting on a bodice. She is now, mm-hmm. oh, she is now. Oh, putting a putting combs in her into her hair, and sometimes she eats a fucking apple. I, that, that. It's the apple of knowledge, guys. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. let's talk right. about the story itself. Um. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say y'all are getting deep into some uh, literary criticism, but have yet to tell the us esoteric what's... shit. <laughs> have yet to tell us the plot. Yeah. Uh, the actually the the plot you gave actually really summed it up. The plot well, I gave does not mention the huntsman. And we oh, mentioned not. Pi- and we mentioned right, the Pippin, Pippin, do you want to save me and Alex from my folly, or Brendan, one of you, so that we don't get into the weeds? Be like, well, actually, though, this version says this, so let's not discount that. Well, what what is the usual agreed upon uh, setup of events here? We have a wicked queen or wicked mother, depending, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and. She has a magic mirror in most of the tellings, I'm guessing. A magic mi- a mirror and a beautiful daughter, a terrible combination. <laughs> Always great. In, in the Irish version, there's a magical fish, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm imagining the magic mirror being voiced by Sebastian from Little Mermaid. <laughs> so, so the queen has a beautiful daughter whom we will call, I don't know, Snow White. Uh, and she's growing up beautiful. The evil queen, uh, is jealous of her beauty, uh, and decides to cast her out and have her murdered. Like you do. Like you do. Whomst among us has not. Yeah, especially <laughs> after asking said magic mirror, hey, hey, who's hotter? My, my, my daughter or me? Come on. Come on. I can take it. In some versions, she's seven. <laughs> Spoiler. Ooh. She could not take it. Could not take it one bit. Yeah, it's the grim version where she's seven years old. Oof. Huh, that's grim. 
Uh, <laughs> so Magic Mirror goes like, of oh, Snow White, <laughs> have you seen her? Uh, which was not the answer that uh, the queen wanted. It just tells the truth. <laughs> what? And not what the vain person wants. Uh, so she casts Snow White out. Snow White goes off into the woods. The evil queen sends a, a huntsman to go make sure that, you know, she actually dies. Uh, and meanwhile, Snow White runs into some uh, dwarves in the woods. Uh, they take care of each other. The huntsman goes and tries no. And, no. and finds Snow... Listen. No, the huntsman takes her out of the... The huntsman takes her Shit, from you're the castle. Right. Listen. And the huntsman, like, this is kind of sus. I feel weird about this. <laughs> like, like, just go into the woods. You'll die in there, and I don't have to murder you. Go on. Get! <laughs> <laughs> White Fang, that's no good. <laughs> uh, it, right, 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 right. Uh, and uh, so he doesn't murder her, uh, which was the least he could do, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> just, just child in ban- abandonment. Hashtag not all huntsmen. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, he, uh, like, kills a deer, grabs its heart uh, to pass off a of Snow White's to prove that, yeah, no, I killed her. Totes. Oh, yeah. She's deaf. She's deaf dead. Look at this not at all suspicious looking heart. And Snow White then finds uh, the, the dwarves, the miners, uh, the people in the woods. They take care of each other. The Wicked Queen finds out she's still alive, tries to murder her anyway. Uh, it doesn't go well. Multiple times does not go well. Yeah. Also, Snow White, Snow White kind of not that bright. <laughs> like, well, she's seven in one of these stories. So. True. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, the witch tries multiple times, and the last attempt is the one that sticks, as it were, which is the poisoned apple. The apple looks very good, very tasty. I better eat this apple from this totally not suspicious hag. No, 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 no. Trust me, trust me. To prove it, I'll eat some too. And just like does that like fake eating <laughs> thing where like I'll, I'll... goes behind her cheek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, she goes into sort of a false sleep death sort of thing, coma type thing. Coma type thing. As we uh, all do. As one does. Uh, and then the prince comes along because it's her. She wakes up and uh, the evil queen is ousted. It could, depending on your version, it's either kisses her or or just take it takes the body home with him. And like, they go. Uh, <laughs> the body tumbles a bit and some apple comes out and he, and she's like, oh, I'm awake. He's like, oh, you're, you're alive. <laughs> oh, hey. Oh, um, oh, that, that's fine. That's yeah, good. It's better. You're it's alive. Better. Thank it's, God. It's, Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably better and more le- legal. To say. We should get married. Like, and um, yeah. Yeah, sure. I'll, yeah, sure. I'll go with that. No particular reason, but I think we should get married. Um <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Can we keep the casket? So, uh, just asking, just would you, uh, as a me- like, memory and, and would um, you, of how we met. And <laughs> would would you mind sometimes if you were to, you know, sleep in there uh, sometimes? You know, for all time's and sake. I could, and then I could watch you. <laughs> <laughs> I also got you this uh, blue uh, popsicle. If you could just eat that. <laughs> Do you like cold baths? I hear they're really good for your skin. Um, and you're so beautiful. I mean, the magic mirror told me so. Yeah, so you should probably um, stay chilly. <laughs> How <laughs> far can we take this? We're going to have to put this in the content notes. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> oh. so, so, trigger warning for whatever <laughs> the, the fuck that was. I don't even know anymore. I mean, uh, I know, but I'll save that for the notes. Yeah, well, we, yeah, we the all. The point have. is, the evil queen gets her comeuppance. Snow White lives happy ever after. Well, the how does how does the how does the evil queen uh, get done in? Depends on the version. In the movie, she you get, she fall, falls off a, off a cliff after be, getting struck by lightning, and then a rock falls on her. I mean, that happens in Disney movies. <laughs> yeah, though it all happens off, off screen, and and you're only include that she's he's he's dead. Dead is that vulture. There's a fly towards her. 
in uh, the Grimm version, uh, they per- put her in an iron shoes that have been and he <laughs> that have been heated in a fire, and, and they're so hot that, that she dances herself to death. I thought that was a different villain mother story. To be fair, it's a pretty good death, so it might have you know traveled around. <laughs> yeah, but in it was- Grimm's, it that's the one in Grimm's. I thought it was Cinderella where uh, the stepmom dances herself to death at their wedding. Uh, dancing herself to death is a common thing in, in Grimm. Like it, it got used in uh, one of their blood libel ones. Ooh. Yeah. Good so, times. So what I'm getting from this is that the Grimm brothers did not approve of dancing. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're the uh, people in charge of that, of that town in Footloose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. Uh. So we've gone over the story. Yep. And Kat, you and I have had some of our, have already done some of our criticisms. Uh, do you think we can do some more? Or would, <laughs> Chip, or would Prep and Brent and murder us in our sleeps? I think they would murder us in our sleep. Quite um, possibly, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then and then we end up in a glass coffin, and then we wake up, and there's some super sus people around us. And I know like, that by the way, we you. love you now. <laughs> well, they're also going to... Bring up another another version. One of them um, has has a, is because like the print one of the uh, people uh, carrying the princess got so annoyed carrying the princess around everywhere or, or for or before the prince uh, that he revived the white by striking her and accidentally discovering the Heimlich maneuver. <laughs> but also, <gasps> whoops. yeah. Actually, though, this does remind me, there is one thing I want to bring up before we go into our versions, mm-hmm. which is that, and this is a bit of family history. Mm. Are we, We're are, we de- are we descended from um, Snow White? Nah, the evil queen. Definitely uh, evil that queen. Scans. <laughs> well, depending on your version, both, so. Hey. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, so, uh, as listening audience may or may not know, uh, one of the things that um, our dad is doing is uh, uh, going to be putting out new editions of um, uh, uh, stories he and our mom wrote that are memorial editions. Yeah. And a lot of these include – well, at most of them so far – include sort of making of essays. And one of the stories that they wrote for a, for an anthology was called The Queen's Mirror – which is a Snow White retelling, and it is Ooh. partially based on the version of Snow White that our great grandmother would tell our dad when he was a kid, and which apparently scared the shit out of him. I um, mean, that's fair. Fans. So, in that version, there's no, there are no dwarves. What there are are, um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess up this German, are the Zaubermenschen, which are the magic men. And they are tall, pale, thin, and live in low green houses in the woods. Do those sound like barrows? Maybe. Like she, so she gets t- taken in by slender men. She gets taken in by the undead. <laughs> um, and so the working title of the story was Snow White and the Seven Vampires. <laughs> Scans. And at the end of that version, the Zaubermenschen show up, steal the queen, and replace her with Snow White, but in a way where, where they say, you are our servant now. So now, in this version of the story from our Austrian great-grandmother, the, the end of the story is the, the evil queen has been taken, apparently, to the underworld, and now the throne is controlled by these magic men <laughs> uh, uh, through Snow White, who has been um, living with them in hell, is what I'm getting. <laughs> That's pretty metal. It is. So I just wanted to throw that in there before we talk about our version. <laughs> our our family history version would be the creepy dark one, huh? Mm-hmm. That that's very McDonald. Hmm. And again, so there you go. Austria. Mm-hmm. The winters are cold and foreboding there. Huh? <laughs> the grim version apparently came from near the Black Forest um, in Germany. This would be closer to Vienna and Austria. But strangely so, enough, that whole area, kind of weird. What? So, so instead of forest, just tall-ass mountains and deep-ass ravines. And a bunch of graves, apparently. Hmm. Yay! 
<laughs> All I'm right. Like, Good job telling the, like a four year old like about the and then the undead took the queen. <laughs> Good night. No, I mean, and there by are the reasons. way, the, the kingdom is now ruled by the damned. Hey, <laughs> I mean, there are I'm reasons. The door. I'm locking the door now. Good night. There are reasons that we are all the way we are, and it goes back generations. That's mm. all I'm saying. Yeah. Are there magic men under your bed? You don't know. God, please don't tell me that. <laughs> when it's dark outside, and I'm going to have to- Wait, Pip, 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 I'll, I'll yes. help you turn this around. They're magic men. They're all named Mike. Thank you. All right. So is there anything else that we need to go over, like- in the story, ignoring the different versions that you two apparently really want to talk about. I've got nothing. No? Kat, what would you change? All right, so here's what uh, uh, here's what I would do. First of all, Snow White's great. I really just want to steal it. Um, and we've been talking a lot recently about the differences between genre and mainstream and whatnot. So I would do a mainstream story. Um, about two sisters. What? Yeah. <laughs> because one of the things, one of the, the pieces of commentary um, that I've read is that this is really about two opposing women. And I'm like, fuck it, make it sisters. That's fun. <sighs> yeah. Um, I'm going to be the one ended up murdered in this. Possibly. <laughs> read the story before. <laughs> Uh, so this is two sisters. Of course, there's going to be, um, they are both, uh, uh, reasonably attractive, but one of them has feelings about this. Um, and ends up talking to her mirror quite a bit. And in doing so, gets the idea that, um, uh, yeah, if I really want to be weird about this, I could make them twins, like twin sisters. Um, and, uh, uh, one of the sisters gets really kind of obsessed about which one is the pretty one of these identical twins and getting in the whole idea behind these objects of adulthood, um, you know, the stays, the comb, the apple of knowledge, the, uh, the sister who has been talking to a mirror starts kind of testing the other sister with objects similar that are representative of the same kind of thing without intending to kill her. But one of them does, or she thinks it does, but uh, she has to hide the evidence of this. And one of the versions that I, because uh, remember I, I mentioned earlier the various, you know, uh, uh, different things that the huntsman did. Well, there's mm. also a list of the different ways that Snow White gets hidden away in a casket. In the grim version, there's like seven glass caskets or something like that. There's gold caskets. And apparently, and this was just a random throwaway line in this essay, one of the versions is a casket that's up in the rafters. And I'm like, well, shit, that's an image. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I love the idea of um, uh, that this the, the sister who's been talking to a mirror accidentally, if not kills her sister um definitely like puts her like gets her unconscious in some way thinks that she's dead and then hides her up in the attic uh and then frankly i want to get a kind of telltale heart thing going on which is also the mirror and uh representationally i'm not sure i would have seven dwarves in this because those are a little difficult unless i want to have um the friends of the sisters sort of occupy that role where they're like hey where's sister b i have a question yeah did i do something to you <laughs> listen like i my- get that i'm the cool one but <laughs> uh, tangential Here. question yeah go on where are the parents a great question. Where well, are they where you, ever? <laughs> that's where you can get, frankly, some of the weirder. Ver- like, if you want to get the stepmother vibe in there, frankly, like, there could be a stepmother who is not helping the situation regarding, like, maybe she plays favorites with, like, these identical twin sisters. Um, you can't even tell them apart or ha- other time. Oh, well, that <laughs> keeps them guessing. Um, and then, you know, the, uh, uh, the father figure, uh, could have his own weirdness. You know, it's like nothing's actually going on, but Mirror Girl is like, you know what? Like, maybe if I was prettier, something weird could happen. That would be a sign that I was the best one. And that's like fucked up. 
And that's really, for me, what makes it sort of mainstream, even though it's sort of edging into horror, is... Sort of? <laughs> shut up. Is that um, this becomes a weird family drama as well. And the the uh, the family drama is played out in this larger stage of the you know, fucked up shit happening. But at its core, it's about, you know... Uh, uh, the pressures put onto women in our society, the pressure of growing up and, and, and shit like that. I just happen to be using, uh, these All, <laughs> listen, various, great. uh, creepy things to, uh, bolster the metaphor at the center. <laughs> Ta-da! That's what I do. And actually, I like them enough. I might do it. Sorry, Pip. Listen. <laughs> First of all, how dare you? Second of all, what gives you the right? If it helps, you're not really... I'm sorry. The character's not really dead. <laughs> if it I helps, the character's so not really much. dead. She's going to come back and... and um, uh, win? Uh, triumph at the end. So. <sighs> well, all I do is win, 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 no matter what. All right. All right. Who's uh, next? I'm going to go next. Do it. Now, keep in mind... I've, this is one of the times when I've thought of the beginning of the sentence, but not really thought through the end of it. Uh, but you know, where I always want to go is I want to make it queer. Yeah. And Snow White is a lot about expectations and growing up, uh, and societal shit. To ooh, are you use gonna, ooh, the gonna, technical term. Ooh, are you going to make, are you going to have, have a Snow White be trans? Snow White can totally be trans, yeah. Yeah. But I was just thinking about, like, uh, becoming part of uh, a new community. And, you know, it's, there's not necessarily a familial relationship involved between Snow White and the Queen. Uh, but the Queen is sort of someone who's been in the community for longer, uh, and therefore thinks that, you know, she is, you know, do certain things. But Snow White is, you know, uh, charming and cool, uh, and everybody loves Snow White. Where everyone used to love the, uh, the queen. Drag queen? Who knows? So it becomes, you know, uh, the evil queen trying to expel Snow White from this community that she's found, and, uh, the queer community trying to get her back. Nice. That's what I've got. Is there a gay bar called the Mineshaft? <laughs> yes, and everyone just calls it the shaft. <laughs> uh, Surely that's too obvious. For the queer community? We don't believe in subtlety. <laughs> Listen, a gay bar would totally be called the mine shaft and they would just call it the shaft. I cannot believe you. Okay. Um like on the one hand, is that going to dive into issues of like dangerous trans stories or is it the next step in the process which is that well there should be allowed to be dangerous trans stories just like there should be allowed to be you know mean queer stories because that's part of the human experience uh, also are you the person to tell that story oh i listen at no point did it say that i would be the one to tell the story <laughs> also uh, i never said that the evil queen is trans just uh queer <laughs> I see. I don't know. It it starts getting a little turfy then. The evil queen is a turf. Evil's in her name. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Then that's fine. <laughs> if you're like, if you're not lampshading it, if you're being really explicit that that's what's going on, then that actually that I feel better about that. Yeah. Uh. All right. So that's me. All right. Next X. Who's next on the chopping block? Uh, wait. Right. Do we, wait. Have we actually commented on Pippin's story? <laughs> I mean, we don't have to. Uh, my story is just perfect all on its own. <laughs> well, I, I was the one who, who suggested the name of the gay bar being the mine shaft because, you know, the miners. I see. So if this is a story about... Um, all about how? <laughs> I mean, Snow no White got get flipped it. and turned upside down. Yeah. yeah. Um, my point is, uh, that, is that the original Snow White is uh, a puberty story. Uh, and... Uh, coming into your queer identity is sort of like a second puberty because you're trying to figure out, uh, who you are, uh, in this new world, new space, new 
mindset thing. Uh, so basically just uh, figuring out a way to transplant, not transplant, translate uh, the sort of new puberty into this uh, classic fairy tale. And sometimes, yes, it can be horrific uh, because puberty sucks no matter how many times you do it. Yay. Should should I do my thing or wait for Bren? Yeah, you know what? Why, why not? All right. Like, there's Snow White and the Seven and Magic Mikes, but that's... <laughs> eh. I mean, you could do something with the uh, Seven Men. Mm. Snow White and the Seven Samurai. <laughs> Wait, damn it! That was going to be mine. <laughs> <laughs> was it really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. Motherfucker. Okay. Amazing. Uh, so, so Snow White and the Seven Samurai, <laughs> which I was going to do. Holy shit! Amazing. Uh, Snow White has been cast out, uh, by the, uh, Shogunate's consort. But she is sending elite ninjas after her, and so S- Snow White has to hire the services of Seven Samurai. But the only thing she can offer is her beauty and her, her, you know, homemaking skills. Which is also a weird th- thing that was, uh, in a good chunk of the, those versions. We'll let you stay with us if you uh, keep house for us. We're I coming, mean, folk. I hmm. mean, that's your common everyday misandry. It's like, oh, there's a woman around. She can do the housework. Yep. I See. will point out, in the Grimm version, the dwarves were perfectly capable of keeping a house. I think they just said, like, yeah, do... Uh, y- um, do, do this d- for uh, us. Do, g- cook. Yeah. And do housework. Seven-year-old. Keep busy. Bob, you're gonna you're gonna do it, right? He's like, yeah, don't worry, I got this. <laughs> yeah. Just, and remember, don't open the door to strangers. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> That's like rule one. Okay, rule two is oh, do a good job keeping house. But rule one is is for God's sakes, for seven, stay safe. <laughs> and with seven and samurai, you are guaranteed at least you know seven foot arcs of blood. <laughs> oh yeah. Now we're 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 talking like full on. Samurai versus Ninja Showdown. And here's the thing, Al. The thing I was going to do is that I was going to have old Snow White there learn seven deadly arts uh, of uh, (gasps) of the samurai from the seven samurai uh, who live in the woods. Holy shit, do it. And so... the 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 secret seventh to the technique, the art of false death. Exactly. <gasps> oh my god. Okay, for real? For real though? Cuz cuz here's the thing, your opponent will think that you are you have been struck down and that is when you can strike an opponent <gasps> who is much stronger than you. Trojan horse. Trojan horse. She gets brought back to the palace in the casket with the frozen. Oh my god. And there's a sword underneath yes. her pillows. Oh, so, my god. Oh so my god. take Snow White but make it kill Bill. Yes. yes. Okay, but for real though, I don't even go here, and I want that story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying now that 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 was the direction I was going to take it when I was going to yeah. go with Se- uh, Snow White and the Seven Samurai. Now the thing is, we can still have those samurai show up toward the end. You know, like we we could have like a a, a, a climax reminiscent of uh, Mortal Kombat, where it's just like an <laughs> army of uh, of guys around Snow White, and it's like. You are all alone. And it's like, she is not alone. Seven hooded figures uh, <laughs> remove their hoods and uh, draw steel next to her. Because th- they'll be all uh, proud to fight alongside the warrior who's learned all seven deadly forms. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Mine was, you know, going to be like a poignant story about finding yourself, you know, and, and new selves and shit. You brought swords into it. You can still have <laughs> yeah, swords. Yeah, I gotta say, I killed off a sister, <clears throat> and I didn't even think to bring a sword into it, and I'm really fucking upset with myself now. Oh, that should be a new rule. If you can add a sword, you add a fucking sword. Well, well, and most times you can add a sword. <laughs> oh, Pepe, is, uh, is your Snow White a lesbian? Because lesbians have swords. That's a good point. That's, you get issued one. <laughs> Yeah, well, along with the toaster. 
And of course, the secret queer handbook that has all the calendar meetings. <laughs> and a brand new car! <laughs> uh, listen, being queer has a lot of perks. The car is a U-Haul. <laughs> you use it to bring all your shit to your girlfriends. <laughs> oh, oh man. Uh, <laughs> Christ. Uh, all right. Do, do I have to make another one? Or can yeah. I just have the, 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 Samurai edition be my contribution. <laughs> Listen, when he took fucking Psycho from me all the way back in Passengers, I wow. had to pull the Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner out of my ass in five seconds, and I did. And you succeeded. Wow. wow. Uh, okay, well, screw you guys. My seven <laughs> deadly forms and I are gonna go party. <laughs> um... Okay, okay, I can think of something. I can think of something. I am contemplating bringing the she into this. Yeah, We're talking yeah. fairies. Uh, I'm thinking Snow White makes a bargain with uh, the seven dwarves there, and it's like kind of fairyland type bargain. So it's going to involve more than you expect and possibly less than you hope. And again, I'm just thinking that there's going to be some bloodshed by the end of this. Probably an evil queen getting her eyes gouged at because all she could uh, want was to perceive beauty. And so now she will perceive no more. I don't know. Take out your two gray eyes and put it into eyes of tree. Yeah, there we go. So she may always look at the beauty of nature. Horrifying uh, forever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... Uh, in mom and dad's story, it's, it's the dwarves the, who are the magic men who are the, uh, evil fairies. What if it's the huntsmen in yours? Oh, oh, I like oh, that. Oh shit, I like that. <laughs> and goes, hey, I don't have to kill you if we make a deal. Make a deal. Make mm -hmm. a deal. Oh, that could also play into the false death thing where it's like, oh man, um, like, like there's like one, like maybe like a, a series of, increasingly weird or bad deals that are made up to and including the false death thing or it's like ah oh, you're dying of poison well we can make one more deal you don't have to be dying of poison <laughs> with the unspoken you could be dying of something else a bit later <laughs> oh yeah the, the only other fallback i have would be to make this a high school au and i don't think we want to play the au game quite yet <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it was all I could do not to do it earlier. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> then we also, we forgot one thing. Mm. Snow White and the Seven Deadly Sins. Ah, oh, shit, shit, we suck. Son of a bitch, really? Oh, man. God damn, it's right there. <laughs> well, I have my Seven Deadly Art Forms, and I'm still proud of that. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah. <sighs> and pride is right already in there. Oh. Like baked in. And envy. Yeah. And gluttony with the apple. Oh, man. Sloth, she sleeps. <laughs> sleeps we like fucked death. Up, you guys. Uh, <laughs> no, we, 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 no, we didn't fuck up. We, we salvaged it right at the very end. Yeah. Pip, you and I are like the worst Catholics. This is really bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even <laughs> go here. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, is that, is that all of us? <laughs> I think so. Oh, man. So, what kind of fun game should we play today? <laughs> I mean, you mentioned the AU game. That's always fun. Yeah, but we've, uh, we've run, we've also run the well dry on it. <laughs> Never. Excuse me, did, did anyone end up in a coffee shop? <laughs> it's true. Uh, a shocking lack of coffee shops in Snow White. What the hell? Right? Uh, okay, but what about the poisoned, like, a uh, 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 chocolate croissant in the, <laughs> in the coffee no, shop bakery no, section. No, the no the poisoned apple fritter. <gasps> uh, yes, yeah, it is. there it is. There it is. Whoop! There it is. Oh, and instead of like the comb, it's actually a uh, a, a the low drone of the overhead music. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's Snow White and the Seven Roasts. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh, that's what wakes her up. Oh. 
triple shot from her one true love. <laughs> <laughs> that guy who keeps showing up every Friday morning. Okay, so retroactively, we're doing the AU game, and I have won. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch. And I was the one who said coffee shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I ran with it. <laughs> kind of like how I stole his thunder with the seven deadly, art for, uh, deadly arts. <laughs> but it's still, oh man, Alex won this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was being all cool and special by, like, bringing out other genres that we typically nope. don't. It fuck that. No, you guys win again. So, okay, okay. Are we going to keep on doing these AUs? <laughs> yeah. Because everything changed when the baristas attacked and Al decided to do the... <laughs> The seven deadly or the seven roasts. So <laughs> <laughs> the barista attacked us. Um, <laughs> oh man! And listen, listen, listen. She fled the huntsman, who in this case is I don't know who the uh, is a uh, their corporate things, and she fled uh, and she fled into the city and found herself off oh, uh, in a coffee shop. <sighs> man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. All right. Fuck all y'all. So a college AU, right? Damn it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Snow White is working on her dissertation. She's getting a PhD. Uh, the Evil Queen is the head of her dissertation committee. <gasps> Makes sense. Oh, no. And That's the research gans. is better. And her research is better. So Snow White and the Seven Sources? <laughs> 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 if there are only seven sources, it's a bad dissertation. Um, the Seven <laughs> Original Sources. Yeah. There you go. So, yeah. Uh, oh, the Huntsman's Librarian. Yes! <laughs> and so Evil Queen tries to discredit uh, her and her research, but in like a subtle way, because Evil Queen is supposed to be like the chair. <laughs> uh, but maybe, you know, goes, oh, did you plagiarize this work? And that's where the Huntsman comes in. Yes. Uh, and the Seven Dwarves are... Grad students. Grad students, yeah. TAs of classes. Yeah. Although I still like seven original sources, the seven sources that the uh, department chair didn't have for their own research. Yeah. Oh, that totally plays into it, too. I just I just do want uh, grad students uh, sitting around bitching. <laughs> that makes sense. Also, they have to go labor in the mines all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like... They find well, her sleeping in the library. Yes. Like, someone's ate my... Someone has eaten some of my chips. Someone... Let's read my book. Someone's sleeping in my chair. <laughs> it's not your chair. Who's Prince Charming? <laughs> oh, uh, is it the tea? Like, no, that's uh, uh. How to have a Prince Charming that isn't a power imbalance? <laughs> yeah, that that's where I was running into problems. It's another <laughs> grad student who's situation? a TA for a different. <gasps> it's another grad student who's the TA for the department chair. Ooh, Ooh yeah. So it's still grad students, right? But has a connection to someone who can. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. There it is. Because my first thought was the dean. I was like, ooh, no. Power. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. Yeah. But does he still have the sleep kink? <laughs> what do you I'm think? Not... <laughs> Listen, just because he hangs out <laughs> in the sleep study lab. <laughs> oh, my God. He's a psychology student, okay? <laughs> oh, my God. He, he lovingly he's... applies the, the headgear. <laughs> Like, listen, I'm I'm doing research on coma patients. That's it. That's it. I was going to say narcolepsy. Oh yeah, narcolepsy. Uh, uh, oh, and in the coffee shop, up the princess Alfie uh, is obviously a yuppie who who, who order her like a a, 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 a tall skit and a half cat up with extra foam. I don't want I don't want Snow White to end up with that douche. He's the cool hipster guy. He unironically loves pumpkin spice lattes. Oh. There you go. That makes him better for me. Does he wear plaid? Of course. Sometimes. Right. He has a plaid scarf, okay? Plaid is love. Whomst amongst us. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so that, that's me. Cat? <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, all right. So for some reason, for the AU game, I really want to do soul marks. Ooh. But I'm trying to figure out how to how to make that work. Snow, um, Snow White and the seven and words. <laughs> and so Snow White and the seven words. Ooh, seven Snow White and the seven words is pretty good. Um cuz I feel like our parents already did Snow White and like let's make vampires. Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 but in Soulmark AUs, which is this is a little 
less mainstream than the maybe college I use. In those ones, your true love's uh, first words or um, their signature or their name or something appears somewhere upon your body. Uh, and and finding them is fun. So um, are the were like so? Whoa, what's your soul mark? Uh, happy, sleepy, sleepy, <laughs> <laughs> and dark. So your soulmate works at, at an allergy clinic. I'm okay, guessing. I got one. I got one. I got one. Okay, ready for this? All right, yeah, it's a yeah. soul mark, right? Um, but her soul mark is on her face. Okay. Okay. And it is, um, it is not in a language we know. <gasps> um, but she was born with this and it is, um, uh, intensely, it's weirdly beautiful, right? And the queen does not understand why the mirror keeps being like, no, she's the fairest one. Come on now. Um, because she's like, no, uh, she's clearly marked, right? What if All the right. queen doesn't have a soul mark? Queen might, I don't know what the fuck the queen's deal is. Here's the thing. And so, then she's a second wife. Ooh, yeah, there's social cultural issues. So check it out. Uh, the story plays out as per <sighs> normal. Oh, wait, no, wait. I know what the queen means. Uh, Mark is. What? You're the fairest of them all. Well, and like, and she's been waiting for the, to hear those words. And then she hears them said by someone to who's Snow White. <laughs> I'm going in a slightly different direction. I like that, but I'm going in a slightly different direction. All right, all right. Which is that uh, the story happens as per normal, and then uh, uh, Snow White's out in the middle of the woods or whatever, and she gets picked up by up uh, magic men. I'm gonna steal that part. Um, but she ends up uh, uh, the the language on her face is their language, and what it says is the fairest one. So they see I mean, her, they read, the, and it's like, oh, it's the fairest one. She enters a massive, gr- the, the, it's a harem situation. <laughs> um, a, a giant group marriage with all these magic men. Um, and it turns out that they are the ones who enchanted the mirror. So that's why the mirror keeps answering that Snow White is the fairest in the land, because it just, that's just what it says. It says that right there, lady. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> um, She's tabled. <laughs> and to get revenge upon the queen, um, the magic men and Snow White travel through the mirror to get the queen. Ah. Oh. Because it's their magic. Uh, and then they take over. And then um, the the kingdom is ruled by Snow White and her uh, seven magical uh, booty calls. Cool. Brand. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm going science fiction. We're going... Snow White and the Seven Starships. Nice. Nice. Uh, Snow White is the heiress of, say, like a space empire or something. And the, I guess, uh, tactical simulation software or whatever, uh, basically told our evil queen or whatever that there is a strong statistical likelihood that the people will love, uh, Snow White as uh, the future, um, Empress, uh, uh, going forward. So that's why she gets cast out. So it's less a vanity thing and more computer algorithms, uh, or computer AI saying Snow White's gonna be better at your job than you are. And the rest of the story is Snow White proving the fact because I'm thinking ah. that, like, uh, I, I don't know if I'd go with, uh, sentient starships a la, uh, Gareth Powell's, uh, uh, latest book series there or uh like starships being neurally linked to snow white that she like is able to control and uh wreak all sorts of awesome space damage with i don't know yet i just want to have starships and be able to steal the title before al can <laughs> <laughs> i am insulted <laughs> <laughs> you came here to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I'm not even going to bother coming up with it's a, a name, name like Snow White and the Seven Star Systems. Snow White <laughs> and, Damn the, it. Uh, and the Seven Fleets. <laughs> Snow White and the Seven Nebulae. 
<laughs> Snow White and the Seven Dwarf Planets. Oh, Damn it. man. The Seven Dwarf Stars. It's like a little cluster oh, of stars. Making that a, is good. Yeah. <laughs> making a star engine or something. Alex still got you, man. I'm sorry. No, that was Pep. Oh, well, never mind. I won't give her credit. Wow. <laughs> I love you. There's going to be some sister murder happening before too long. <laughs> always gonna happen we knew this we knew this going in you're saying it's always gonna involve sister murder i mean, I mean have you paid attention to folk so- stories it's true like ever since at a young age i turned to pippin and i'm like hey you know that song Twa sisters did you ever notice <laughs> <laughs> that the older darker sister kills the younger fairer one just pointing that out pippin because everyone loves the younger, fairer sister more, because she's just better. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I still consider it a major, like, move forward in our relationship when I found you that song where the little sister not only survives, but murdered everybody. <laughs> the Night the Lights Went Out in Georgia is, like, your song. <laughs> well, you listened to it and went, yes, this describes Pippin. <laughs> <laughs> well, the older sibling was the dumbass, <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, that scans too. Right? So I gave you that. And that's how you can tell that we've matured. We've grown as people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What else is there? I, I think that's it. All right. In that case, before we go, does anyone have anything to plug? Um. So I just, at the time of this recording, I just finished uh, being a panelist at Boscone 58. And for the remainder of February... If you uh, if you register with Boscone, you can still go back and see recordings of my panels and, in fact, most of the panels. Um, and those will be up all of February. So support your local conventions. See a really very nicely uh, 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 tech side um, panels and um, and yeah. Otherwise, I have my my regular free to read uh, Patreon zine. Uh, the Small Thoughts and Mi- Minor Hours magazine. Uh, this month, I seem to be dedicated to messing up recipe after recipe of syllabub. <laughs> so that's what I've got going on. And and you just have to and you have to dispose them all. I just I have to somehow dispose of the results over somehow. and over somehow. And it's uh, a tough life you need. <laughs> and I've still got my streaming shows on uh, the Arcade Comedy Theater webpage and uh, Zoom or sorry, uh, and uh, and uh, its YouTube channel and all that. So uh, check that out uh, whenever you feel bored and want to see people doing silly improv stuff. Uh, and Alex and I just continue uh, sitting around being better than other people. Yeah. Prove Suspicious. It. Living our best lives. Sus. <laughs> 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 As always, if you have an idea or prompt to submit, head on over to nostorysacred.com slash submission. Follow us on Twitter at nostorysacred, or send an email through contact at nostorysacred.com. Your hosts have been Alex MacDonald, Brendan MacDonald, Pepper MacDonald, and Catherine Crichton. Editing and music for this episode done by Brendan. Transcript done by Ashley DaCosta. Art by Jay Wolf. Show notes and transcripts are available at nostorysacred.com. Thanks for listening, everyone. And please rate, review, and subscribe to No Story Secret. You can also visit our Patreon page to support the show and get neat rewards at patreon.com slash no story sacred. See you next time when we talk about an original story idea by Kat's daughter. Any uh, hints for the, the uh, listeners there, Kat? Well, uh, my oldest is 11 uh, and um, is currently obsessed with uh, everything spooky. Uh, oh, and shit. mysteries and mysteries. So you're, you're vaguely safe. Um, and I, I will say that I will be earnestly attempting to make this a child safe episode. So, so also, that? so guys, we should also probably try not to swear. I'm, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can try. I, do you want I, to be Pip, Aunt Pip, Aunt Pippin? What kind of person do you want to be for your yeah. nieces? The kind that, the, the, True the kind, to myself. The kind that swears in front of them. <laughs> wow. The cool one. Anyway, so yeah, um, I, I think that this will be fun. Um, and I'm excited to to see where it goes. <laughs> Until then, where no story is thicker and any story can be changed. I'm Alex. I'm Kat. I'm Brendan. And I'm Pippin. And we're 
No, no stories, stories sacred. sacred. <laughs>